What's going on, Falcons fans? Welcome into Overreaction Monday, or as I like to say, Victory Monday, because the Atlanta Falcons are 3-2. and two. I lost my voice because of the win, so just bear with me for the next 10 to 12 minutes or so. But Atlanta did squeak out a come-from-behind victory against C.J. Stroud and the Texans. So we're going to run through some of the overreactions I've seen online and kind of break them down one by one. But if you want the Falcons to keep winning, sub for dubs, baby. It might sound cliche, but you know what? It's working. Because when we pick up more subscribers, this team wins ball games. So if you want them to win this upcoming week against the commies, make sure you hit the sub button down below. Now let's get into my week five overreactions for the Atlanta Falcons, starting with Desmond Ritter. Is he only a home quarterback? Is he an inside cat? Streets are talking. I think there might be something to this. And if Atlanta could somehow figure out a way to just play all their games at home, I don't see a way this team loses. Unfortunately, Roger Goodell has, a for has solved that problem and forces Atlanta go to go on the road. So the league is rigged. But Desmond Ritter, week five against the Texans, was at his best. 28 for 37, 328 yards. First time in, the NFL, in his NFL career, he went over 300 yards. Two total touchdowns, one through the air to Bijan, one on the ground. No turnovers and a QBR of 81.5. Desmond Ritter needed to show good things. He needed to show an improvement and a bounce-back performance from two dreadful starts against the Lions and the Jags, and he bounced back in a major way. So if you're wondering what Desmond Ritter is made of, sure, it might just be a win against the Texans. They're not supposed to be any good, and that's part of the overreaction right now. But I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy this. I'll soak in this. I'll bathe in this thing, and I'll probably drink that bathwater later because seeing Desmond Ritter bounce back that's what's best for this team in 2023. Might not be the guy forever, but right now this team is ready to win right now. They've got a lot of talent on this roster. They're in a wide open division. And if Desmond Ritter can bounce back after slow starts, I'll take it. Now what is interesting is Desmond Ritter at home compared to on the road. Three games at home so far, two games on the road. You can figure out where all three wins came from. But completion percentage, way up at home. Yards, way up. Touchdowns, up interceptions down, rushing yards and touchdowns up, quarterback rating way up. Desmond Ritter is an inside cat. That's what I learned, basically. He doesn't want to go on the road. He's not a road guy. That's fine. He wants to stay at home. We all have a homeboy, that one guy, like an always sunny, who never wants to leave Philadelphia. That's Desmond Ritter for Atlanta, and that's fine. He wants to spend his whole life playing in Atlanta, eating at Taco Mac every single day of the week. I'm not going to stop him. But we do have to figure out a way for him to play on the road because he's never lost a game at home in the NFL or at Cincinnati in college. But like I said at the top of the video, there are 50% of the games on the schedule that fall in the away category. So he has continued to play very well in the fourth quarter. We just got to figure out a way for Desmond Ritter to take that success and bring it on the road with him. I don't know if he gets rattled too easily. I don't know if he's got thin skin, if someone makes a comment to him from the crowd, maybe he gets some earplugs. I don't know. He's got to figure it out. But if Atlanta continues to play this way, they are going to be a playoff team because they are going to weak out, squeak out enough home victories to get to nine, eight wins, and that's probably going to do it to get the seventh at least wild card spot in the NFC. And if you get a couple road victories, boom, nine, 10, 11 victories, you have yourself a for sure playoff spot. Now, I did find these uh, stats from PFF very interesting. Desmond Ritter in the third and fourth quarter versus the Texans. 18 for 21, 201 yards, one touchdown, and 123.8 passer rating. The guy's got ice in his veins. He is made for the big moments, which is interesting because usually when quarterbacks struggle, it's because of the big moments. We just got to somehow get it through Desmond Ritter's head that every time he takes the field, it's the fourth quarter of a home game. And then this team's going to go 17-0. So if someone can figure that out, write it down, send it to Flowery Branch, and enjoy a Super Bowl parade at some point in Atlanta. Because if we can get Desmond Ritter to play like this all four quarters, usually quarterbacks start off, you know, that are bad, good starts in the beginning of the game, and then kind of go down in the fourth quarter. It's the opposite for Desmond. He's a fourth quarter king. That's all we got to say. But are you back in on Desmond Ritter? Yes. No, or door number three, he never left. I don't know if anyone's in door number three, but if you are, shout out to you because you should be taking your victory laps on people like me right now. I'm not quite sold on being back in on Desmond Ritter. 
a home win against the Houston Texans is probably an overreaction to believe he's going to be a franchise QB. But if I can see these types of numbers on the road against teams with an above 500 record, yeah, I could get in on Desmond Ritter. Today's show is being supported by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports app where all you have to do is pick more or less for two to six player stat projections, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Prize Picks is also super simple and user friendly. I spend like one to two minutes on the app every Sunday morning making my selections. And with it being Monday and we having Monday Night Football, here's who I am rolling with on tonight's game. I've got more for Jimmy Garoppolo passing yards at 20, 242 and a half. I just sense a big uh, primetime Jimmy G breakout game coming. I'll also take more on Daniel Carlson. I know, bear with me here, the kicker. Seven and a half fantasy points. I think we're gonna get a lot of uh, we're gonna get a lot of Raiders field goals. So give me the more on that. And then I don't even know who this last guy is. Dontavian Wicks more at four and a half receiving yards. Just catch the ball one time, and that t- that hits. So go to PrizePicks.com/clns and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars. The link for that is in the comments and description of today's video. Prize Picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Moving on to our second Week 5 overreaction. Kyle Pitts, is he back? You might think I was going to have a big-time overreaction to this one. I'm going to say, I need to see more. I need to see more of this from Kyle Pitts. But this is a great start. You had to start somewhere, right? A thousand-mile journey begins with one step. This was the first step for Kyle Pitts returning to being a thousand-yard tight end like we saw his rookie season. He finally broke out this year, uh, had 87 receiving yards. That was the most in a game since October of last season. Nearly a full calendar year since he went over just 80 receiving yards. 11 targets, 7 receptions. He came up big at several key moments on third down to move the chains. Pitts looked like an offensive weapon, not just some regular Joe Schmo, Dalton Schultz tight end one. Pitts needed this game bad, right? He needed to have a confidence booster. He needed to find a role in this offense. And that role might be, hey, on third and 11, if you want to move the chains and you don't have to go and you can't go Drake London for a short gain, go to Kyle Pitts. Now, I also find this very interesting. I want to share with you guys right now. Look at Kyle Pitts' route map here. Do you notice anything? How about all the routes going to the left? Look at all of them, just drifting to the left every single time. Why am I bringing this up? Because Kyle Pitts is coming off a torn MCL in his right knee. That's the knee you plant in the ground when you want to turn to the left on a dime. And so it looks like Kyle Pitts is really starting to get healthy, starting to get confidence in that right knee to plant it and go to the left. Because after the first four weeks of the season, I'm sure word got out while watching film, Kyle Pitts... He's like Jalen Brown. He can't go left anymore. Well, now he's going left, and now he's putting up big numbers. So if he can use both sides of the field, you don't know what to expect as a DB, and that's going to make life miserable for linebackers and safeties trying to guard number eight. Moving on to my third overreaction from week five, A.J. Terrell and Jeff Okuda. Are they them? Accurate. Yes, they are. I love this growing cornerback duo between Terrell and Okuda, and I hope Okuda continues to play well and stays healthy the rest of the way because he would be primed for like a two- to three-year contract extension and lock him and Terrell down as your outside corners for the next three to four seasons, arguably. Because the Texans' wide receivers, albeit they don't have any big you know, world beaters, they've got rookies in Tank Dell and John Mechie, more or less. Nico Collins is only a second- or third-year guy. Robert Woods, the veteran, and Tank Dell did suffer an injury in the game, and so did Robert Woods. But nevertheless, these four wide receivers have been pretty good, actually, through the first four weeks of the season, but they kind of hit a wall in Week 5 against Atlanta Secondary. They had some good chunk plays at times, but altogether, it was not a slow, painful death for Atlanta Secondary. They gave up some yardage, but that bend-don't-break Ryan Nielsen defense shut them down once they crossed the 50. Now, I thought you guys might be interested by this tweet that I came across where Daniel Flick tweets out, Texans QB CJ Stroud postgame discussing Atlanta's coverage uh, looks. Okuda and AJ Terrell are two great defensive backs. I think they are a great tandem together. 
It always sounds great when other when your own quarterback says it, but when the opposing quarterback says it, it really hits home. The Falcons actually might have something here, right? AJ Terrell, a first round pick by Atlanta. Jeff Okuda, a top five pick by Detroit. Hopefully, he can stay healthy. And like I said, if you can lock down Terrell with a contract extension, and then Okuda with a two to three year, not nearly as big extension you could have a really nice dynamic cornerback duo for three to four straight seasons, including this year. Now, grade A.J. Terrell and Jeff Okuda as a duo. Scale it 1 to 10. Like, as far as CB1 and CB2 go, yeah, Terrell might not be Pat Sertan or Sauce Gardner, but his running mate is right there with him, and that speaks to the depth this Falcons secondary has. I would give this duo... A solid 7. I think it is a 7 out of 10. I think it's one of the better cornerback duos in the NFL. Before we get on out of here, I do want to give two quick shout-outs here. This first one coming in from Richard Mead with a $2 super thanks. Richard, Richard, Richard. Shout-out to you, Richard. Thank you so much for super thanking the show. Really appreciate your generous donation. And then our next um, shout-out comes in from Brody Brown. Brody Brown shared one of our videos over on Twitter and tagged producer Roly. So Brody, thank you so much for supporting the show. Greatly appreciate it. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are not already as we continue to grow. Don't miss a single thing when it comes to the Dirty Birds when you're subscribed.